Today, I'm going to show you how to paint ants at home. Uh, better rewind the tape. It's been about three years since an Indian scientist named Mohammed Babu, he managed to take some very beautiful pictures of some transparent ants, which when they drank a certain colored water, they ended up becoming the color of that water they drank. His photos were quite successful at the time, and I put it on the list of experiences that we could one day do in the world manual. We just needed the damn transparent ant. Well, this idea was stored in the World Manual's idea file for a long time, until this week we left some dirty things on the sink, and by a very happy coincidence, some little ants appeared. And guess what? These little ants have a transparent butt. So finally, we are going to try to do this in the World Manual, and the first difficulty is that these little ants are extremely small. I don't know if they are the same ants that the Indian found, but I will have to try to transform our common camera into a kind of microscope camera. Here in place of the common lens, I'm going to put three extension tubes. There are three together here, and these tubes serve so that we can take pictures closer up. And in front of the extension tubes, I'm going to put a macro lens. It's also a lens that lets us take pictures very close up. And then we have this giant camera here. Just to give you an idea of the size of things in this camera, I'm going to film this ruler that has millimeter by millimeter divisions. You can see there that the whole frame is about 12 millimeters. In other words, it's narrower than my finger. So the little screen that we're looking at, the camera can get so close that everything it sees is narrower than my little finger. You also notice that we have to be very careful not to shake the camera because it shakes very easily. But that's settled, let's move on to the next step, which is to make the ants food. I'm going to take four beakers and put a finger of water in each one. Then I put two pinches of sugar and then our beloved and loved dye. And before that whining starts from people who don't think before they comment, the dye is edible and the sugar is edible. In other words, this here has practically the same ingredients as a powdered juice. So let's go put this here for the ants to eat. Using these different droppers here, which are actually called pasture pipettes, I'm going to put four drops on a paper, one drop of each color, and now I have a great excuse to leave the dirty dishes on the sink, which is to call the little ants. I think it's going to take a while for them to get to the dye. Let's see. Uh, you won't believe what this camera is seeing. I'm going to put it on the screen if you like it. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. Oh. Well, now I'm going to take the opportunity to answer some questions that the biggest fan of the world's manual sent us by email. She sent a video with questions about ants. Let's see. Hi, Ibre. How are you? First, I wanted to say that I think you're very handsome and I really like your work. My grandmother and my mother always say that too. Now, I wanted to know if you already know what kind of ant this is, if you know its name, if it's a Tanajura, if it's a black widow, if it's a fire ant, what is it? The name of this ant is Tapanoma melanocephalum. That's the Latin name, the scientific name of the ant, but we can also call it a ghost ant. It's a super common ant in everyone's house. It's really tiny and it can live between the cracks in the tiles and even in the crack that is next to the door frame. And do you know what she does with that sugar? If she eats it, if she leaves it on the street or if she takes it home like the bees? The ant does eat sugar, yes. She eats it, ingests the sugar, and then it goes to that big butt of hers, which actually isn't a butt. 
that there is the ant's abdomen. It would be like our belly. There she has two stomachs. Yes, ants have two stomachs. And it's there that she will process all the sugar to be able to use as food. But there's a very interesting thing. It's that the ant sometimes doesn't use all the sugar. And she ends up regurgitating, like vomiting the sugar for other ants to eat as well. And how do these ants find sugar? Do they smell it? Are they passing by and find it? How is that? It's quite strange to think that the ant can find the sugar because she must not have x-ray vision, but she can smell the sugar. And the ant doesn't have a nose. She smells through sensors that they have on their antennas and near their mouth. That's how they manage to get to our dye balls. And how do they tell their colleagues that there's a lot of sugar? Do they call, shout? What do they do? Because when we pass by this one ant, then there are a bunch of ants taking that sugar. What does she do? Well, ants, when they tap their bottoms on the ground, they release chemical substances called pheromones. So they end up leaving a kind of chemical trail, a chemical trace that the other ants follow. And that's why the whole group of ants can find the sugar. Then I wanted to send a kiss to my husband, who is a big fan of Manuel Du Mundo and is watching me now and seeing you too. I think he's going to be a little mad at me because I think you're handsome. And I said it here for everyone to see. Very well, Mrs. Mariana. Thank you for your participation. I'm sure your husband has very good taste. But cool biological experiments like this one you see on Manuel do Mundo. I'll leave as a suggestion there another experiment that we did with ants, which is how to see the jets of acid that ants release when we mess with the ant hill. The link is on this side. On the other side, I'm gonna leave a homemade microscope for you to make with your cell phone and be able to see the ants up close. And I wanted to thank three people who helped us a lot to research about ants. It's Professor Paulo Cesar Moreira Carvalho de Oliveira, who is a professor in the Department of Animal Biology at Unicamp. Professor Odair Bueno, who is a researcher at the Center for Social Insect Studies. Ah, social insects, if you don't know what it is, look it up because it's really cool. At the Institute of Biosciences at UNESP in Rio Claro. And also Marcio Diaz from the blog Formigas Brazil. It's an animal blog, very cool of course. If it's about ants, it's animal. It's a very cool blog, which has everything about ants. It's worth checking out. It's formigasbrazil.com.